Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome in. Before we begin worship, we've got, I don't know, three or I think four minutes before we move into worship. I want to take some time to cover uh, announcements that you can find in your bulletin or, or, or if you're watching online, you can find these on um, our webpage. We've got a copy of the bulletin there. Or you can download our app on tithe.ly. Uh, quickly, quickly, quickly to let you know this morning as we come to the communion table. Um, this morning's communion offering is going to go to our neighbors right behind us at Anchorage Children's Home. Uh, be supporting them with our communion offering this month. Uh, today, the kids are going to stay with their parents in the sanctuary. If you have a child with you and you're thinking, what am I going to do with him? If they did not get an activity bag before they came in, raise your hand, jump up, run to the back door, do whatever, and we'll make sure you get an activity bag for them. Uh, FP Women's Fundraiser is going strong this morning. Stop by and check out the latest fundraiser in the gathering area. they got some neat little things out there uh, for you to help out with the uh, women's ministry here. Uh, big thank you to everybody that helped out at Fifth Sunday last Sunday. We're going to make that a, um, hopefully, a tradition here, Fifth Sunday tradition. Had a great time. Big thank you to everyone that helped, greeters, ushers, decorators, servers, um, cleaners, and those who brought those delicious dishes. Uh, everyone uh, worshiped together, and we had a great, great time. Uh, opportunities to serve. We talked about this last Sunday. If you would like to serve in the church in some way, you can certainly find a way to do it out in the gathering area or a list of ways that you can volunteer here at the church and hope you pay attention to that. Walking in the footsteps of Jesus, there are several members of the church that are interested in getting together a trip to Israel, to the Holy Land. If you're interested in that, you can give uh, Pat or Vicki Ahern a call. They are ramrodding that tour, seeing if we've got enough people that are interested for it to make. And if you've got a business or you offer a service, uh, leave your business card and your contact information on the bulletin board. We put up a bulletin board as you walk down the adult Sunday school hall. It's all the way through the gathering area before you move into the fellowship hall. If you'll take a left, you'll see a bulletin board down there. Folks that are in the church that, that uh, work for themselves or uh, work at a place where they think you, they might have something that you need, you can leave your business card there. And as always, at the bottom of that back page of the bulletin is a record of our faithfulness as we give to the mission here uh, of Forest Park Church. Thanks so much for being here today. My name is David Willis. It's my privilege to be the pastor here at Forest Park Church. And we are honored to have you with us, whether you're here in the sanctuary whether you're watching online, uh, we're happy to have you. Take some time today if you're in the sanctuary, fill out the connection card that's on the end of your bulletin, separate that. Drop it in the offering plate as it comes around or in one of the white baskets that you'll see as you exit the sanctuary today. And thank you once again for taking time out of your busy week to come and uh, celebrate, to worship, to be with us as we prepare to come to the communion table. Before we move into worship, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship with praying. Bow with me. God, that is what we do now. Uh, we are preparing the field of our heart to worship you. Uh, may what we offer to you today be a blessing. May what we offer to you today be uh, uh, glorifying to your holy name. At the end of it, what we seek is not only the glorification of your name, but our revival. Because when we leave here today, Father, we're called to go and step outside the walls of the church and be who you've called us to be. So, Lord, we need your help to do that. Today, Father, be with us. Inhabit our worship and praise. And may you be lifted up. We love you. We thank you for being with us. We pray this in Christ's holy name. Amen. Stand together and worship with us today. Thanks for coming. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to church. Um, as you're standing getting ready for worship, I just want to um, address the big boards that are out in the lobby. This is the final fundraiser for our the ladies' fall retreat. This year, um, you have the opportunity to sponsor a day, which let's say you pick August 6th. 
you would put six dollars in that little yellow envelope and just drop it in that box right there it's going to go to offset the cost of retreat for our ladies um, and also to pay for um, the musical worship leaders that we have coming in as well as the facility that we where we hold our treat so if you're wondering what that money is going toward that's where it's going um, and we're really excited as a second reminder ladies this is the second this is the last week for early registration so if you want to get that discount off your registration cost go ahead and get that in today or this week um, and we'll get you on the list of filling up so that's very exciting so we'll just jump right into worship good morning
I have to share with you, this morning on the way to church, I said to Zach, I said, you know, the last couple of days, I have not been intentional and I can feel it. When I intentionally wake up and do not have a quiet time and I do something different that makes my flesh happy, like scroll my phone. Something simple as turning on Good Morning America instead of coming into his presence. Something as simple as going and making something when I know he's calling me to that time with him. Your girl here has not really been intentional this last week. And Zach said, well, what does that look like for you personally? Like, what do you mean by that? I told him, I said, well, you know, in the mornings when all of you are asleep, my mama heart knows I got just a little bit of time. I want to get in the presence of my father because the rest of the day is different when I do it. My temper, my patience, my fruit, my fruit, my fruit is different when I spend time with the father. This next song is one that, y'all, it brings me to my knees. My kids are sick of it because I sing it all the time. They know just about every word of this, but it's because it's an anthem for my soul that no matter, I could have woke up this morning feeling ashamed that I have not done the church thing, right? The good Christian girl thing. Instead, I get to step into his presence and say, I messed up, but I know you're good. And I know that you took on the blame. Our Jesus the one who loves us so much, when he died on the cross, our Father doesn't look at us with shame, he sees Jesus. So I want you to be encouraged this morning if you're struggling with something, because I know we, all of us do, it doesn't matter what the sin is, the enemy can use it against us and, and prohibit us from moving forward into what the Lord has. Don't let him do it. Don't stay in a place of shame, of condemnation, because those things are not from the Lord. He's gonna convict and redirect. So if you're struggling with something that you feel heaviness, pray for breakthrough because your God does not want you to stay in that place. Let's continue worshiping and I pray that you would be intentional this week just to come into his presence. But if you can't do it, let's be intentional in this song. Let's worship. All right, God, this one's for you. Jesus, 
You may be seated. Let's pray together. Father, you are so good. It doesn't ever get old saying that because it's so true. I know it to my bones because you've proven it to me, Father. You have taken me through the fire. You are so good. You don't want to use us. You want us to come into, come into a relationship with you, Lord, because when we do that, man, we don't want nothing else but to be used by you. You're just the best planner, the best friend, the best father, the best mother. The, you're everything, God. I pray that you would remind the people in this room, no matter what they have faced, no matter the chaotic circumstances that they're in the middle of, no matter if their fear is overwhelming, help them to remember that that is not from you. You don't want that for them. So I pray this morning that people would take the chains off, Lord, and they would lay it at your feet and know that you are a God that can carry it. All we have to do is love you, praise you, and worship you. And Lord, you fight every battle for us. Thank you for being a God who protects our reputation in the midst of chaos. You never ask us to ruin our reputation. You ask us to be a mighty warrior for your kingdom. So I thank you, Father, for the honor. I pray that you would be with the tithes and offerings. Lord, you're doing some just really incredible things here in this church, Lord, and we see it and it's exciting, but so does the enemy. So I pray protection over this place in your name, Father. I pray protection over our ministries. I pray protection over these people in your room, Lord, because if we have division here, we will not reach the people outside of this building. So thank you that all we have to do is take one step in your presence and we've done right. I love you, Father, and I pray that you would continue to use us in a mighty way here to bring glory to you because that's all it's about. In your name we pray, amen. You were the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most high.
Amen. Fantastic time in worship, as is the norm in both services. Thank you, Pat. Uh, early service, late service, we have great worship, and we are delighted that you're here to share in that with us today. A couple of things there I wanted to point out. Uh, first, uh, what, what's the name of the song you did that you say you sing all the time? I love you, Lord. Beautiful name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Goodness of God. Yeah, that's it. I, I never can remember that. It's great to hear y'all sing it, but I'm a big C.C. Winans fan. If, if you don't know C.C. Winans, no, you, I, I, listen, I don't think there's anybody that can keep up with C.C. If you don't know C.C. Winans, do yourself a favor and hit YouTube and look up C.C. Winans and watch her sing that same song. It is a blessing. It is the, kind of like the story of her life. It's got her kids, her husband, her grandchild in there. Just a great, great uh, song that, I, I'm like you, Corey, that sticks in my head and I find myself saying those words over and over again because I don't sing. Um, I, so I say those words over and over again. And then too, I was, uh, I was talking with, uh, what's your name? Marianne. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The older I get, the more that happens. I was talking with Marianne beforehand, and if you're watching on Facebook, I want to invite you to come down and be with us if you've never been with us before. We've got great tech people here at the church. Okay, uh, Mike and Zach and everybody that helps out Skip up in the crow's nest. And we do our best to try to, to through Facebook, to bring to you a, a good product. But we simply cannot get the sound right on Facebook. And when you listen on Facebook, what you hear pales in comparison to what you hear in the sanctuary. So I invite you to come down and hear how we really sound. I'm going to sound the same, okay? Uh, that's, uh, listen, I know when I'm the weakest link. I'm going to sound the same. The music sounds so much better. We're working on it. We're very grateful that we've got a platform like Facebook that doesn't cost us anything. We're working on it, and, and we're going to get there. But listen, the, the music and the praise and worship in both services is so much more impressive and, and so much more of a blessing uh, in person. Uh, so we invite you to come down one Sunday and share with us if you've never been with us. If you have, you, you know precisely what you're missing. Whether you're here or whether you're watching on Facebook, we are delighted that you have chosen to be with us today. We're going to come to the communion table in just a little bit. We're going to share some time together. As I've told you, the communion offerings that we share today will be going to Anchorage Children's Home, our neighbor behind us. I've got some good things going on around the church, right? Movie theaters back open. Anchorage Children Home, Children's Home has just expanded. Things are, things are going good around in the neighborhood of the church. And, and we're glad to be in this neighborhood. And, and we're proud that you have chosen to be part of this neighborhood with us. For the past few weeks, we've been talking about how it is that, that we seek God and, and moving forward as a different iteration of Forest Park, what it's going to look like for us to seek God. And, and last week, we kind of shifted into a different gear. We started talking about unity, seeking God through unity. And we said just kind of as a recap last week that one of the big parts of unity is this uh, part of the whole process that that is hope hope is is huge we talked a lot about that how we seek unity through providing hope and that's one of the things that the church does and today we're going to continue that conversation I said with you last week that, that we're going to be camping out in the same piece of scripture for the next few weeks it's John chapter 17 that, that part of John that, uh, uh, that tells us about how Jesus actually prayed for you and for me. It's not that he was praying for the disciples that were with him at the time. It's not that he was praying for his apostles. It's that he was praying for you and for me. 
And the verses that we're going to share really bear that out. We're going to be uh, paying close attention to that scripture, but closer attention to different portions of that scripture, as you'll see today. I've talked to you before about my love for all things YouTube. Mm, almost all things YouTube, okay? Not all things YouTube, but almost all things YouTube. YouTube is a great teacher for somebody like me. Not only am I a cabbage head, but I am a uh, visual learner. So if you want me to do something, show me how to do it. And then I will attempt it. And I was sharing with the early service today, that's a lot different than my father when I, when I was a kid. Uh, when my dad wanted to teach me how to do something or help him do something, the focus was on not irritating him, not learning how to do what he was doing, but keeping him from getting angry because he was always about that far from getting angry and having to do something that he probably really didn't want to do anyway and having to have a kid help him did not help that whole situation. So I learned more from YouTube than I probably did from my father, which is a, no, no big stretch there because I like to see things done. It's one thing to be able to read about it, but it's another thing to have it shown to you, to have it demonstrated to you. The worst thing about YouTube is that YouTube and the producers uh, on YouTube have the ability to edit. So they can edit out their mistakes. Uh, I find them all. The, the mistakes that they've made, I find everything that they've edited out. Um, but for me and for you, as we talk about seeking God, and as we talk about providing hope for the community that the church is, we, we also, in the church, find out that, that we bring unity through purpose. One of the things the church does, that, that the church is uniquely qualified to do, is not just bring hope to the world, but to bring purpose to the world as well. And for us in the church, purpose is kind of discipleship. Purpose is kind of teaching. So showing people how, drawing them together, sharing the word with them, all of these different things is, is kind of what the church does and why the church does what it does. So we seek God and we seek God through worship. We seek God through a bunch of different ways. We seek God through uh, unity, through unity, through hope and unity. Today we're going to be talking about bringing unity through purpose. And as we talk about purpose, what I want to share with you starting out is that piece of scripture. So if you have your Bibles, turn to the Gospel of John chapter 17, and I'm going to read through those few verses once again, and then I'll show you what I want to home in on this week. So John chapter 17, verses 20 through 26, again, this is Jesus speaking. So if you got a Bible with you, these letters may be in red. Uh, John 17, verse 20 says this. My prayer is not for them, of, for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. Let me, let me pause right there and remind you. When Jesus says my prayer is not for them alone, he's talking about his apostles. He's talking about those disciples that are with him. He says, so I'm not just praying for those people who've been following me and those people that are with me now. I'm praying for all of those who are going to believe in me through their message. So Jesus understood that he was at the point of his life where things were about to shift. And what he had been teaching to his apostles and to his disciples that had been following up to that point was about to move into a different realm because he was going to be departing, leaving his ministry, leaving the kingdom that had come into this world to those people that he had taught. So when Jesus says, look, I'm not praying for them anymore. Now I'm praying for those that are going to be believing. He's actually praying for you and he's praying for me. He's praying for everyone who's come to believe through the apostles' message. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I've given them the glory that you gave to me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. There's that word again. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you've given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory that you have given me, 
because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Unity. Unity, we said last week, is the key witness to our faith in God. Unity is the key witness to our faith in God. So, so what should the world see when the world looks at the church? Ostensibly and preferably, the world should see unity. When the world looks at the church as a whole, remember we talked about Little C Catholic Church last week, Little C Catholic as in universal. When the world looks at the universal church, it should see unity, we hope. We know, though, that in the world we live in today, the world we live in, this church, this place, the unity is unity is fleeting, even in the church at times. But verse 24 says something that I want to share with you and dig a little bit deeper in. Father says, Jesus, I want those you have given me to see my glory. The glory you have given me because you love me before the creation of the world. So Jesus says, I want, those that you, I want those that you've given me to see my glory. The glory you've given me because you love me before the creation of the world. Last week it was unity through hope. This week it's unity through purpose. And as we talk about unity, as we talk about purpose, we cannot escape discipleship because discipleship is the key to helping people discover purpose. Discipleship is something that is both easily understood inside of the Christian realm and something that's a little bit uh, evasive in the Christian mindset as well. Because if you say, I really would like somebody to disciple me, you're not really sure what all that entails. Well, I, I would like to, I would like to have somebody. And sometimes when you say to someone, will you be my mentor in the faith? Will you disciple me in the faith? They're not really sure what to do. So there's this thing. When we talk about helping people discover their purpose, there's this thing that allows us to, to move forward even though we are quite unsure about what to do. When we talk about unity, when we talk about hope, when we talk about purpose, we begin to understand that Jesus has done for us what we need to do to help people understand their purpose. It's not just their purpose in the church, but it's their purpose in the church that bleeds over into the world. What has God equipped you to do uniquely that you can share with the world? And then what has God equipped you simply by virtue to do, simply by virtue of being human that you can share in the world in his name? So he equips you to do things in his name in the world that help build the kingdom. And then just simply by virtue of being a human, he's equipped you to do things in the world in his name that further his kingdom that help you discover your purpose. Okay, can you swing a broom? Most of us can. So how can I do that in the world to honor his name? It's the church's job to help you discover that purpose. Not only to give you hope, but help you discover purpose. Jesus did it for us. and. To really talk about the reasons or the ways that he did that, we, we have to go back to the stories in the gospel that tell us about Jesus' last few hours alive. When we look at what we call Holy Week, that last week of Jesus' life running up to the crucifixion and the celebration of the first Easter, we see that it begins with what we call Palm Sunday, right? They, he and his disciples have gone to Jerusalem, and he is saying to them, okay, this is what we're about to do. We're about to go to Jerusalem, and we're going to celebrate the Passover. And he's already told them that there's a time coming when he's going to go into Jerusalem, and he's going to be betrayed into the hands of men. 
and he's going to die. And they, his disciples can't quite comprehend the weight of that story. But he starts out telling them, okay, so this is what we're going to do. The last week of my life, the first thing that I want to do with you is settle on and celebrate tradition. I want to go with you. And I want to worship with you as we celebrate the Passover. And that's tradition. Helping people find their purpose means that we help them understand and know what the traditions of the church are. And it doesn't matter how non-denominational or how funky the church is you're going to. It doesn't matter how uh, dyed in the wool wrote the church is that you're going to everybody that worships God through the Holy Scripture is participating in tradition there is the tradition if nothing else coming together on a Sunday if it well I don't we know we worship on Saturday well okay so there's the tradition of coming together as a family of believers and worshiping together that's tradition right so there are traditions that we help people understand inside Christianity. That's part of helping people discover their purpose. And Jesus says to his disciples, we are going to participate in this tradition. We're going to Jerusalem, and we're going to participate in the Passover celebration. Passover, man, Passover had happened thousands of years before. We talk about it almost every time we celebrate communion here inside the church. We talk about how it is that, that God brought that final plague right on the Egyptians. And he says to Moses, okay, this is it. This is what's going to cause the Egyptians to finally release the Israelite people from captivity. I'm going to send the death angel through uh, the land of Egypt. And bad things are going to happen. So you need to tell the Jews, you need to tell the Israelites to take a perfect lamb, slaughter him, take the blood, and put it over their door frame. And the death angel will pass that house over. And oh, by the way, after they got free, they got squared away, God said, you're to mark this day and you're to celebrate. And so that's what Jesus is saying. Part of your purpose in following me is to remember the tradition of the God who has given you life and hope and second chance. And we call that worship. We call that celebrating communion. Do you realize that? That we're about to come to the communion table and we are still inextricably linked to that Old Testament worship time together. That Passover, the communion, but it's in a different way now. And still, we are hooked to the truth of Scripture. That's amazing. So what do we do as the body that's designed to help people discover their purpose when we teach them the traditions of the church and this is one of our traditions we've got another tradition that we're going to celebrate in a in a couple of sundays we're going to be baptizing an infant and notice i said baptizing not dedicating all right we are wesleyan in our belief system we are part of what the world tongue-in-cheek tongue-in-cheek refers to as baby dunkers you, you, you know what that is <laughs> it's those Christian denominations that practice baptism of infants. Catholic Church, Presbyterian Church, all right, United Methodist Church, a lot of the Methodist traditions, a lot of the Wesleyan tradition. We baptize infants. We don't dedicate infants, we baptize them. We have an infant baptism, we have a believer's baptism, and the world tongue in cheek calls us baby dunkers. That's part of the celebration and part of the purpose and part of the tradition of the church, along with communion. We call these sacraments. We celebrate the sacrament of baptism. We celebrate the sacrament of holy communion. And these are all purposeful traditions that help us worship. We help people discover their purpose. We step outside the walls of the church and we begin to look even harder at what Jesus brought to bear as he brought his disciples into Jerusalem for that last celebration of Passover. We home in on, on teaching. And how did Jesus do this? In some of the Gospels, when you read, you see that Jesus brings his disciples in and he immediately 
takes on the role of servant. Back in those days, you, you know the story. A lot of you have seen, uh, a lot of you have seen the chosen. You understand that people wore sandals and you understand that the roads were dusty and dirty and had a lot of unseemly things. And, and when you walk in sandals in that environment, your feet get dirty. And in Jesus' times, households employed servants. And when you came to someone's house to visit, the servant would wash your feet for you to get all that grime off of them before you came into the house. So Jesus' disciples shows up, uh, show up for the celebration of the Passover, and Jesus strips off his outer garment, wraps a towel around his waist, and assumes the role of servant. You, you remember that exchange between he and Peter? Peter said, mm, no, you're not washing me. Let, hey, let me open it. And Jesus said, look, unless I wash your feet, you've got no part with me. And Peter says, well, I'm all in then. Don't just wash my feet. Wash me from my feet to the top of my head. What is that? That's teaching. That's demonstration. That's helping people discover their purpose, that their purpose lies outside of themselves. What did we say last week about unity and about this unity of hope? That the church teaches people that their hope lies outside their circumstance. That their hope lies in the person of Jesus Christ. Your purpose lies outside your own circumstance as well. Your purpose calls you to behave in a manner that is quite contrary to what the world teaches. And when the Savior of this world, the Creator of this world, the man that died on the cross for you, demonstrates to you and his disciples what it means to be a servant, what it means to, to set the example that he shows for us our purpose. We discover purpose not just through looking at the examples that Jesus set for us. We discover purpose also by participating in the traditions and really establishing what we call holy habits. Holy habits are those habits that we develop. They can include the sacraments. But when I think of holy habits, what I think of is kind of what Corey was talking about earlier. What, what's your routine when you get out of bed in the morning? How does your routine help you to lean in to who God is? That's a holy habit. And when you break your holy habits, you get out of step. And your purpose doesn't become obscured, but your purpose becomes a little bit more difficult. There's a holy habit that you're practicing right now. Regular attendance in a worship service. That's a holy habit. So when we talk about the church providing hope and we talk about the church providing purpose we've got some very distinct ways that we look at that Jesus said I want those that you've given me to be able to see my glory there's only one way that the world can appreciate the glory of God and that's if the church teaches the world who God is through the person of Jesus and helps them understand how much the name of God deserves to be glorified. What we do here and now, providing hope and providing purpose, will lead us to do what the church has been called to do. And as we discover who we are as Forest Park Church, moving on through the coming year, we will engage in hope and we will engage in purpose and we will engage in showing people what it means to be unified around the person of Jesus a couple of weeks ago as I closed down here I, I was putting together a um, a chain of command for the church right we used to have a well-established chain of command when we were United Methodist. The, the, the overall governing body of the United Methodist Church is the General Conference of the United Methodist Church. That's the body that can change our book of discipline. But as I was looking at establishing that chain of command here, we've got a different governing body. The overarching governing body that we have here now is our church conference that we'll have once a year and 
and very close to that, right under that, is our church council now. But the umbrella that covers all of that, the thing that lies at the top of our chain of command, is Holy Scripture. And the reason that we have Holy Scripture at the top is because Holy Scripture provides unity. Holy Scripture provides unity. Well, how could it provide unity? Everybody preacher, everybody interprets it differently. You're right. There are people that interpret Holy Scripture differently. For us, we're going to do the best we can to ferret out what it says to us and how that plays out in our life personally, but more How do I say this? More to the point, how it points to those foundational beliefs we have, like those things that we include in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. And it goes on and establishes this, this foundation of what Christians believe. Then there are those denominational differences, and then there are those, uh, those personal beliefs that are different. For us, the unity that we find in helping people understand that they have hope that goes beyond their circumstance, in helping people understand that they have pers- purpose that lives outside the walls of this church, is what we are going to do. To the best of our ability. Because this purpose, this discipleship, is how we share the truth of who God is with the world. Pray with me. Father, someone is floating this morning. Somebody somewhere within the sound of my voice has no idea what I'm talking about. They came looking for a particular message about one thing, and uh, they've not heard it. And yet everything they need to know has been revealed. It is the truth of who you are that leads us as a church to do what we need to do in order to settle upon the purpose and the hope that we are designed to share. All is centered on the truth of the gospel, that you are the living son of God, that you have died our death, that you have defeated hell and death, And that you are alive forevermore. And it's your desire to reconcile us to a God who has said from the very beginning how much he loves us. And not only has he said it from the beginning, he has demonstrated it from the beginning. The message that that, that needs to be heard is, is reconciliation is possible. All we have to do is is reach out and take your hand. So, Lord, as those who are the church and as those, Father, who may be listening that are pre-Christian, let us hear that message once again. It is a message of hope and of purpose. It is a message of unity. Come. Come and see. Come and see. That was Jesus' call to the first disciples. So for those that are wondering, those that are in doubt, those that, that may feel this morning that they're not worthy to come to the communion table, help us to remember that simple call. Come and see. Come and see. And let us hear once again the words of your gentle invitation to a life lived with hope and purpose in a world that is totally void of both. Oh God, give us these things. We ask them in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We've recounted a lot of the story that I like to share with you when we come to the communion table. Jesus called his disciples together and he um, asked them to participate in the Passover meal. And when the meal was over, he did something that was out of the ordinary. He took a loaf of bread.
and I don't know, this did this in the other service. I don't want y'all to think I've got something funky on my hands. I don't. This is Purell hand sanitizer. And for whatever reason, it is like gelling and falling off of my hands. My hands are clean. Don't worry. Had you? No. Uh, listen. They're clean. They're good. So Jesus calls his disciples together, and he celebrates Passover with them. And at the end of the supper, he does something that's way out of the ordinary. He takes a loaf of bread, and he lifts the bread, and he asks the Lord to bless it, and he breaks it. And he gives it to his disciples, and he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. And so they did. And after they had had an opportunity to share the bread, Jesus took the cup. He lifted the cup. He asked the Lord to bless it. And he passed it to his disciples and he said, take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so they did. We, go, we have come to know this as communion. And our communion liturgy says there are three tests for coming forward to receive communion. They have nothing to do with what you call yourself. Call yourself Catholic, call yourself Baptist, nothing to do with that. This is not the church's table, this is the Lord's table. The three questions that we have in our communion liturgy are straight into the point, do you love God? Are you earnestly, sincerely sorry for your sin? And do you want to live at peace with your neighbor? Okay? Do I love God? Am I sorry for my sin? Do I want to live at peace with other people? That, that's it. So as you ask yourself those questions this morning, know that that's the qualification for coming forward. It doesn't matter what your faith tradition is. This, this is a meal for you. So as we prepare to come forward and celebrate this time of communion with one another, this, this time of, of tradition, this time of worship, I invite you now not only to share with me, but to pray with me. Heavenly Father, pour out your presence on us gathered here today. Bless all of us and make these elements that we're about to share with each other be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may move into the world to be the body of Christ redeemed by his blood so that the world may come to know what it means to have hope that is eternal, what it means to have purpose that lives beyond them, and what it means to serve a risen Savior in a world that is lost and dying without him. We hear our prayer as we come before you now to do this. Our prayer is of sincere heart that you join us in this time and bless bless this offering we pray this in Christ's name amen those who are assisting with communion would come forward please broken for you Christ's body broken for you the body of Christ broken for you Christ's body broken for you the body of Christ broken for you Christ's body given for you this is the blood of Christ shed for you Christ's blood on your behalf. The blood of Christ given for you. Christ's blood given for you. The blood of Christ shed on your behalf. Christ's blood for your sins. Let us pray. Father, as we take these elements, equip us to serve. And as we do this, may you be blessed. May we be revived. 
And may we find the unity that the church needs, not just within ourselves, but within you. We're alive within us. Let this be so for your glory in Christ's name. Amen. We're going to have two serving stations today, one here and one here. I'm going to invite you to line up along the outside walls and receive the elements. You can kneel at the altar rail and leave your communion offering there if you would like. If you don't wish to kneel, you can go back to your seats up the center aisle and just line up along the outside walls and we will serve until everybody has had an opportunity to uh, partake. If you have uh, something that prevents you from coming forward at the end if you'll slip your hand up we will be happy to bring the elements to you where you are sitting there you are sir very good okay sure you may come forward as you feel led the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. while they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. But Jesus said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your mind? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still did not believe it, because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it, and he ate it in their presence. And he said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then, then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. I tell you the truth, said Jesus. This generation will certainly not pass away until all of these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away. But my words will never pass away. children to Jesus to have him touch them but the disciples rebuked them when Jesus saw this he was indignant he said to them let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these I tell you the truth anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter and he took the children in his arms put his hands on them and blessed them Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name claiming I am the Christ and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and 
kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All of these are the beginning of birth pains. Jesus said, no one knows that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Up to the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. When they came to Capernaum, he was asked in the houses, as he entered the houses, he asked, what are you arguing about on the road? But his disciples kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called his disciples and said, anyone wants to be first they must be the very last and servant of all and he took a little child and had him stand among them taking him in his arms he said to them whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me and whoever welcomes me and whoever does not welcome me the one who sent me Is there anyone who needs to be served where you're sitting? Friends, we are so very grateful that you have joined us today for this time of worship and coming to the communion table. We hope that you will join us again very soon, and I invite you to stand for the benediction. As you depart, do not doubt the love of God that God has for you. Move into the world now with that love pouring out of you. Do this with that love moving you forward, with the power of the Holy Spirit being the wind in your sails, and with the absolute love of Jesus on your side. Do this in his precious name. Amen. Thank you for coming.